Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I'm Mike B and today I'm going to be hopefully clarifying for some of you that have been asking a lot um, very recently in the comments about what is the solution to these uh, military surplus firearms being so expensive and how do we fix that? Is it fixable and all that stuff? So we're going to or hopefully I'm going to be able to clarify that a little bit more. Um, I have made videos on this topic in the past. Not a lot of people watched it and there were a lot of people that were pissed off at my solution and thought I was stupid and didn't, under, didn't understand things like supply and demand. So I'll, I'll make another video now that more people are going to be watching this and hopefully you'll understand what the solution is and if it's possible and what the results would be and what you would have to do. So I'm going to go over a a little bit of a background as to why they're so expensive nowadays and they weren't that expensive. You hear the glory days that weren't that long ago, it was eight to 10 years ago, they were still really affordable and so was ammunition. So there's a couple reasons why they're not affordable anymore or super, super affordable, we'll say. Uh, in 2012, again, if you've already seen my videos on this, you'll just have to bear with me. I'll really abridge this whole um, uh, kind of recap of what happened in 2012, but uh, in 2012, basically after the Sandy Hook shooting in um, the U.S., there was a massive panic because there was proposed, there was talk of possibly proposing talk of possibly proposing gun legislation at a federal level. It never went anywhere, but people still went out and panic bought everything with from ARs to AKs to set me's G3, PTR 91s, you name it. <clears throat> when those were all when those were all um, dried up and sold. They were like, oh my God, we need guns. Obama's going to take our guns. Oh my God, oh my God. Panicking, 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 panicking. Buying up all the ammo. <clears throat> and then they noticed there was a rifle sitting on the counter, or behind the counter, that was $75. <clears throat> and it's a gun, so, oh, it's that old Russian commie piece of crap. Uh, but I need guns, so I'm, I'll take five of them. And I'll take, you know, f uh, 10 cans of uh, 440 rounds of ammo. You know, so there was this panic buying like that. That's the kind of thing that led to people discovering the military surplus firearm market because then they went out and actually shot those and realized that they're not bad at all and they're, some of them are pretty damn decent shooting. So um, that combined with the internet and some YouTubers, I don't blame them solely, but there are some bigger YouTubers that have gun channels that uh, focus on military surplus stuff that are partially responsible for the interest growing and being more widespread and people kind of being aware of the the hobby that people like myself and uh, before me enjoyed quite a bit again it's not a bad thing either that you get more people interested in this and how to preserve the history of the these military surplus firearms as well as enjoy shooting them and stuff but that was a factor combine that um, as the years went on with trade restrictions those are very com convoluted and complicated so i'm not really gonna get into that there are trade restrictions now um, from different countries that we're, we were getting things from that we are not currently getting things from, and et cetera, et cetera. So there's less supply and there was more demand created, as you can kind of see from this little recap. So, again, I understand supply and demand. If there's low supply and high demand, the price will increase. If there's ample supply and low demand, the price decreases. I know, I've lived through both uh, scenarios in military surplus firearms. Uh, in just in 2012, you couldn't, I mean, there were 9130s, most of them got 9130s everywhere, and they always sat, and nobody wanted to buy them. I bought one every time I could because I liked them and whatever, and used them to trade, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so what is the solution, you might ask? It's, it's probably not something you want to hear as a new collector or a younger person, but if, if most people did this, it would actually, in the long run, benefit everybody that's suffering right now. Now hear me out before you get all pissed off and start typing your angry comment. Stop paying the ridiculous prices that people are asking for their military surplus firearms based on short-term impatience and panic um, due to like my history. Oh, they're going to be dried up. No, there are millions of these things in this country. Um, I'm talking about the United States, all you Canadian guys. Oh yeah, up here, here's the situation. Every single comment. Cool. Get an update in the comments, I'm sure. But we're talking about the U.S. Um, I'm not saying not to buy military surplus firearms. That's something that people were like, oh, so we should just stop buying them so you can buy them all. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying stop being so impatient and, oh, it's right in front of me. You know, he's asking $500. I don't, I don't know how much it's worth. I, I got to have it. it, it it's going to be valuable. Well, no, that's the kind of things that, that's the kind of scenario that keeps these prices being driven up because then, 
you know, they go talk to their friends. Oh, I just got five hundred dollars for my moist nugget. You know, oh, you you should have bought more. You should sell yours for six. Maybe you can get six for yours, and somebody pays it and all that stuff. Um, you know, and, and it's just this history thing. Yes, again, they're around. I get it. I, that's why I collect. I totally understand that. But when I'm talking about ridiculous prices, you're like, well, what is a ridiculous price for this, this, and this, and this? Well, I don't know. It's I'm just flipping through some of my notes. I wrote down bullet points. I'm sorry. Shoot me. Um, I'm talking about, I'll, I'll give an example in a little bit, but if a large majority of people stopped paying these stupid asking prices, they would eventually come down, which is the long-term gain, right? <clears throat> as long as people keep paying the stupid prices, uh, even if there's a magical flood of surplus, all these restrictions, these trade restrictions go away. Uh, we get tons of 9130s in, K98s, you name it. Um, retailers and uh, importers and all that stuff and the people they buy it from in country will be charging the stupid prices that stupid people have been paying for years now and they'll actually just keep increasing in price. So, uh, for example, as a ridiculous price in my opinion, is just take this rifle. I've been seeing a lot of these in the comments. Oh, I just picked up a Mosin round receiver for $400, you know, but it came with the sling and the bayonet and an ammo pouch. Yes, they all did for 75 bucks not that long ago. Now, I get that these things increase in value over time. Military surplus firearms do. But again, I literally paid $75 with tax out the door for this thing in 2012. This particular rifle. It's a 1942 Ishevsk round receiver. Nothing special about it. Got the orange cyanide paint. Nah, I'll, make, I'll maybe make another video on that bullshit myth. But uh, anyway, so I paid $75 for this. People are paying $400 for this. So that's that's over a five times, that's almost six times more than they cost just eight years ago. That doesn't correlate with other values of sur most surplus firearms that have increased. Um, like Enfields, they used to be two to three hundred dollars. Now they're four to five, three to five, we'll just say. So that hasn't increased five times. It's increased a little bit, but it's about one, maybe, you know, between a half and one and a half times what it's what it was worth eight, nine years ago due to supply and all that stuff. And then, you know, inflation, if you really want to think that we're being inflated that fast, whatever, you can, you can say that. Same thing with these, um, just a shooter grade, not an immaculate M48 Mauser eight years ago, 250 bucks. Now they're going for 400. So it's not that much of a hike. Um, <clears throat> and I, I just don't think that people should be paying ridiculous prices for that. So if you, if you, if you, oops, example, another example, and then I'll keep, I'll quit ranting and kind of wrap the video up. So if you find an M48 that looks like this, where it's, you know, got some scuffs out of it, got chunks out of there, it's pretty worn, got a little bit of patina on it, but overall it's, the bore is decent and it's a good shooter. If you see this for $250 to $300, that would be a decent price because that's what they were going for, you know, eight years ago, even just five years ago, they were going for that. Now I saw in the comments, somebody posted that they saw one that was in mint condition, which a lot of these were never fired. They never, or, you know, outside of the factory, they never left the Cosmoly. They were charging $800 for those. Now, I would give five for one of those in the current climate. I'm just giving you examples. Don't ask me all these questions about specific rifles of being worth what and whatnot. This is just kind of an example of what I'm talking about by ridiculous prices. Um, you have to do your own research. That's part of the hobby. You can't just sit there and ask everybody and have them do all the work for you. You're going to have to do some research and figure out what things we're going for, what things uh, are going for. And ridiculous prices so there's really no easy answer to it but i'm just giving you the actual solution if people stop paying these stupid prices and they only paid the prices that were you know reasonable for again factoring all the inflation and you know just time passing and, and the supply and demand um yeah eventually people would say oh crap if i want to sell this i can't sell it for 800 dollars. i have to sell it for the more reasonable 350 that it's worth and that would eventually bring the prices down and then importers would have to you know meet that because they would see that the People aren't paying what they want. But here's the thing. I'll wrap the video up really quick. This is impossible. So don't get your hopes up. Very few people, if any, are going to do this. And then, you know, you're going to come back in five years and bitch at me about, well, I stopped buying them and now they're five times what they were when you told me to stop buying them. So it, it is impossible. I had to wait till the end to tell you that and burst your bubble. Um, prices are never going to come down as long as people are paying, uh, paying these prices and they're panicking and they're impatient. The impatience is a really big thing. I may seem like I get a lot of new things a lot, but I am very patient and I'm very picky 
about what prices I pay, and I always have been on this. That's kind of the fun of it. I don't just pay face value of what somebody's asking without questioning it because my history, and then go ask, how did I do? Which I'll be making a video on about why you shouldn't do that kind of shit. Um, so yeah, that's that's my MO. That's most of my collector friends' MO. We look for a deal, we gauge the current market, and if we see something for going for <clears throat> under the normal rate or around it, and we want it, there we go. We don't go out of our way to just go, oh, well, there, there it is right in front of us, and it's you know two or three times what a reasonable price would be. I'm just going to pay that because I want it, and uh, if I don't get it now, I'm never going to get it. That, that's what I'm saying. So it is killing the hobby currently, and I don't foresee it changing at all. But, I, but hey, people asked if, if, if there was a solution to this, and there is. It's just damn near impossible. So hope you enjoy me ranting for hopefully under or around 10 minutes. And hopefully you're not too pissed off. I'm really sorry. That wasn't my intention is to piss you off. It is sad to me that the hobby is dying because it's just no longer affordable and like it was. But, um, I mean, the hobby is evolving. It's changing. It's just like everything else. Change is, is inevitable. So, anyway, if you made it this far, again, I like doing this. So, if you made it this far, comment below that you made it this far. And now, if you're not too pissed off and you like this content and you agree with me, or even if you don't, I don't really care, um, consider supporting my work financially. It allows me to get cool things like this. Uh, I mean, I, most of this stuff I've had for years, but it allows me to expand in like other videos that I've been doing lately about historical topics, um, getting things tan to tangibly teach you. Um, you can do that via Patreon, which the link to that is in the description, or you can become a channel member by hitting join below the video. Five bucks a month or, or more on either platform gets you access to my Discord server, which is really fun. A lot of cool information on there. It's really interactive. I have a good time, and hopefully other people do too. They're still on there, so they must be. So yeah, and it also helps from like ballistic tests and shooting videos and stuff like that. <clears throat> so you get the picture. If you can't support the channel financially, I totally get that. That's fine. Just make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And the best thing you can do is actually share this video if you think it's worth watching. That uh, gets me more views and hopefully a bigger audience to teach people about this and maybe kind of, maybe, maybe possibly be able to correct this issue in the future. So, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me by watching this and sharing the video and financially. All your Patreon supporters, you guys rock. Um, you've allowed me to get some really cool stuff this year. Next year is going to be even better. So, I will end the video now and stop ranting. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next video.